Hello and welcome to chapter 10, moving your subtools within the ZBrush core. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can move, scale, and rotate any subtools within the ZBrush core. So currently we have our demo soldier selected and in the tool palette, you can see the icon for the demo soldier along with the number 11 in the top right corner. This is an indicator to tell you how many subtools are included within this one tool. So I'm going to open up my subtool menu and you can see all the subtools that we have here available. Now to select a subtool, we can either click on any of the subtools that we want to work with, or we can hold the alt key and just tap on the subtool that we wish to edit. Now you can see as we're selecting, the subtool, it's becoming brighter than all other subtools. This is just an indicator for you so that you know which subtool is the selected one without having to look at our subtool list. So let's take a look at moving and rotating and scaling our vest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to one of our modes, move, scale, or rotate by either clicking on either one of the buttons or using the shortcuts. In this case, move is W scale is E and rotate is R. So I'm going to tap the move and what will appear is our 3D gizmo. So our arrows are going to allow us to move our model. Our rectangles are going to allow us to scale and then these lines right here are going to allow us to rotate. We can also rotate along the camera and we can even move along the screen space. So the blue is our Z axis, so you can see we can move, we can scale, or we can rotate along the Z axis. So you can find this in all other axis points. So here's our Y, and we can scale, and then of course we can rotate, and then we have our X move, and then we have our X scaling, and then of course our X rotate. Now the yellow circle found in the middle will scale along all three axes at once. The white circle is rotating based upon the screen space. And then these little handles on either corner is allowing us to move along the screen space. Now, the 3D gizmo is going to allow you to move your pivot point. So in order to move your pivot point around, we're going to use the icons found here along the top of the 3D gizmo. So we're going to unlock our gizmo by clicking this little lock. This is now going to allow us to move the 3D gizmo instead of the mesh. So you can see here, as I'm moving this 3D gizmo around, the mesh is not moving. We can also just tap anywhere on our mesh, and you can see that the 3D gizmo will read the surface nor normal and adjust the gizmo accordingly. Now at any point in time, I want to reset this 3D gizmo to always be along the world axis. That's what this little reset orientation is for. I'm gonna tap this while we have it unlocked and you can see the 3D gizmo is now snapping to world axis. So the other thing I may want to do is center this back to the middle of our vest. So to do this, I'm gonna click on this little on mask mesh center icon and you can see that'll move our 3D gizmo back to the center of our vest. By clicking the home button, it's going to move the gizmo to the center of the world. So that's very different than hitting the icon to the left of that, which is centering the 3D gizmo based upon the mesh that is selected and the home is moving it to the center. Now we can also use a shortcut to do these movements with our 3D gizmo. If I hold my Alt key, you can see that the unlock is now available. So letting go of the Alt key will make our lock closed again. Holding the Alt key will open it. So now I can hold the Alt key, move my gizmo where I would like it to go, and then let go of my Alt key, and you'll see that the lock will now close. So again, holding my Alt key, and then now maybe I want to put it back to the center of the mesh. Letting go of my Alt key will now lock the gizmo. 
So when this icon is in a lock state, that is moving the mesh, rotating the mesh, and scaling the mesh. When we have an unlock lock, that's moving the gizmo where we'd like it to be placed. And that's the simple basics of using the 3D gizmo within the ZBrush core. Thank you for watching this video and happy ZBrush.